They make it look so easy in the movies. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Well, that was really unpleasant. I don't know if I could have been an old westerny person. I can't do that. All right, I'm talking about Back to the Future Part 3 today. Why am I not talking about Part 1? Well, because Part 3's got the most prominent ingestible. It's got wake-up juice. Super important part of my childhood. Maybe it was a super important part of your childhood. Is my collar all popped? Do I look like a sweet, like, beach scientist? Doc Brown has just called it off with uh, Clara Clayton, his school teacher girlfriend, because he's a time traveler and he's got to go back to his own time and she thinks he's crazy and doesn't believe him. And he's very, very, very depressed about it. And so he has just spent an entire evening in the saloon, sitting and staring at a single shot of booze and describing the future to anybody who would listen and being laughed at for it as an old kook. Now, Doc Brown is not much of a drinker, it turns out. And so, upon Marty arriving to tell Doc Brown, we gotta go because their plan is to avoid the shootout with Mad Dog Tannen, Biff Tannen's great-great-grandfather, I think. Doc Brown says, you're right, back to the future. He swings his shot of whiskey, apparently his first shot of whiskey he ever had, immediately passes out, just dies right on the floor. Uh, and as I think the man behind the bar says, now there's a man who can't hold his whiskey. Marty calls for, hey, do you have some coffee, black? That's the worst Marty McFly. Fly. And uh, the man behind the bar says, if you want to wake him up, coffee's not what you need. You're going to need to make a batch of wake up juice. I'm paraphrasing, but I'm close up. Now, they don't tell us what's in Wake Up Juice, but from the film, and a keen eye, we can tell that it's olive juice, mustard seed, chili flake, cayenne powder, onion powder, and Tabasco sauce. And I, for science, as a scientist, endeavor to do that. I want to talk for just a brief second about how important Back to the Future was in my childhood. Um, I, when I was a kid, like a young child, like first grade, second grade, Anybody who asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would say, I want to be a scientist. But I did not understand that when Doc Brown in the first Back to the Future introduced himself as a scientist, uh, that it was a joke about what a scientist is. I just thought that, yes, that is what a scientist is. A person with a garage full of gadgets who goes on wild uh, time adventures with, uh, with his friends. So when I said scientist, I didn't mean a mathematician or studied learned individual, I meant dangerous lunatic with a rogue nuclear reactor strapped to the back of a sports car used for smuggling cocaine uh, running from Libyans. That's the sign of scientist I wanted to be. Um, like Rick Sanchez. Uh, turns out that's not what science is and also that I'm very bad at math so chemistry was not my subject in school. I've got this here beer mug. Now, truth be told, there is no way I am able to fill this beer mug with wake up juice. I will add, I shall now add to the beer mug my olive brine. Mmm, that looks extremely appetizing. My onion powder. Okay, this might hurt some. My, oh my God, why did I put that much in there? What am I doing to myself? That was the cayenne. Cayenne is hot. The chili flakes. I should have had a softer hand on the cayenne and a heavier hand on the chili flakes and the mustard seeds, which uh, yeah, I was about to say, scare me a little bit because I know you can make a nerve agent with it. Gotta work those seeds together. Oh yeah. It smells much better than you would think, actually. I mean, I, I want to say that like it doesn't sound, smell like anything I want to put in my mouth, but it does smell kind of nice. It's a it smells a bit like uh, something you would marinate a steak with or um, uh, a dry rub, something like that. It's on its way to being basically barbecue. Right back to the future. I'll drink my shot now. Thank you. What a nice whiskey. It leads with vanilla. It leads into some boiled kind of spicy peanuts thing going on there. Let's just pretend that I'm unconscious and that someone's going to pour this in my mouth with a funnel. 
I don't want to disappoint you, but I'm not going to drink this whole thing. I think that would actually kill me. I'm just going to have a sip, but... It is mustardy, spicy, and oniony. My mouth is tingling. I'm not going to lie. I really thought that I was just going to respond by immediately dropping off camera and vomiting. It is way better than I thought it was going to be. Um, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. I could drink a lot more of this. Oh, I forgot the Tabasco. I've been informed that I my my wake up sauce juice is incomplete. I feel like I'm in the Marx Brothers. I've been informed that my wake up juice is incomplete because I forgot my Tabasco. This is accurate. I did. There we go. What? Yeah, we're gonna stir that again. Sorry, do over, fellas. <coughs> Ah, the dainty tinkling of the toddy stick. If anything, the Tabasco should mellow this out because Tabasco is largely vin vinegar. I think that we just kind of cut the heat on this. We'll find out. Yeah, well, well here we go. Hot, spicy. Real hot. Really hot. Mostly mustard, Tabasco. So my mouth's on fire, but honestly, it, I mean, I, I would love to play this bigger, but really the truth is, is that it's really not any hotter than any buffalo wings I've ever had. It's not the most enjoyable experience. I'm not like a huge fan of hot foods. I am sweating. I think I, I think I'd like some whiskey now, actually. I thought I was gonna want water, but somehow the whiskey sounds better. Um, so that's fun. What a discovery. This makes the whiskey taste sweet like candy. Um, and now I want some water. <coughs> Something else just happened as well. Clean canteen, the best way to keep your water sober than a priest in church on Sunday, which I think is a joke about not being sober. Okay, my mouth is face is still on fire, which is great. That capsaicin is really working itself on me. So I have no plan for how to turn this into a drink yet, but we're going to do it on the fly. That was always my intent with this episode. What I want to do now is take what I just experienced, that hot and spicy stuff, and that combination of bourbon and turn that into a hot, spicy bourbon hangover drink, a breakfast drink, a hair of the dog, uh, something you would have at brunch. We're gonna riff that out on the fly. I think it's a shaken drink, so we're gonna need a shaker, as one does when you shake a drink. We're gonna add a bar spoon of my cayenne powder, um, and a bar spoon of chili flake. We're gonna add in two or three bar spoons of onion powder. These mustard seeds. Okay, well, I know what we're gonna do. We're gonna add in um, two bar spoons of mustard seed. I had to dry off my muddler because what I wanna do now is use that to kind of crack those mustard seeds. Kind of make a poultice in here. Okay, we've kind of cracked that up a little bit. Let's do an ounce of olive brine. Not really designed for pouring, doing our best here. Let's add in two ounces of our Buffalo Trace bourbon. I'm just thinking also thematically now, right? And this is how my brain works with this stuff. We're making like an 1880s morning after hair of the dog drink. It's gotta be a little bit medicinal. It's gotta have bitters in it. And it's kind of that Western thing. I think we need um, four dashes. Two dashes. Let's go two dashes of Peixot's bitters. Nice. Mmm. I'm getting somewhere with this. A little gum syrup, maybe? Maybe? Sure, what the heck. I mean, it'll either help... It'll be an invisible flavor in this drink. 
it will just be there to kind of help bring things together. We're gonna put in two bar spoons of gum syrup. Um, I think we're ready to shake. I don't know what else I would add into something like this, but I, I also don't know exactly what kind of a drink I'm making at the moment. So whatever, that's fine. Some things are like that. That's how you experiment. Uh, I'm gonna add in my whole cube. I'm gonna add in my broken cube. I'm just gonna open pour this directly into a beer mug. And now I'm gonna top that up with some seltzer. Just to give it a little bit of length. And we'll stir that up a bit. And this will be the how to drink version of wake up juice. It's not bad. That's not bad at all. It's honestly. Oh, we forgot the, we forgot the, the we forgot the, needs this, it totally needs this. Yeah, definitely add a bottle of Tabasco sauce. No, I add a lot of Tabasco sauce. I'm gonna garnish this with uh, some chili peppers. Let's do three of them. Well, look, I'm not gonna lie, it ain't attractive, but we made it up on the fly. Let's see how, how to drink wake up juice goes. The nose is one of Tabasco and vinegar and death. That ain't bad. It is cayenne forward. <laughs> um, the cayenne is very forward, and that gives way to chili and mustard. Uh, with a vinegar base that you get kind of throughout. The tonsils have a unique sensation of tingling and burning that is new to me. Um, <coughs> the bourbon is a little bit lost in it. Let's go back in for another taste and see if we can get that bourbon out. <sighs> yeah, that's a real peppery nose. You know, I don't really love the peppery like margaritas and things. I'm not a big fan of spicy drinks, but. I actually really like it in my mouth. The drinking part of it is very nice, and then the heat comes after. The mustard is there. That cayenne, that chili. It's not bad with vinegar. It just tastes like you're, it's, it's hot. It's a hot drink, but it's not like Carolina Reaper hot. It's not Death Pepper hot. It's not, I don't know what this would rank on the Scoville sale, scale, but I'm just hoping that Sean Evans is gonna ask me to come over and eat hot wings with him one of these days. I just wanted to prep up. I thought this might be a good way to get ready for those buffalo wings. You know, the one thing I would say is that the bitters are a little bit lost. Uh, we could probably skip the bitters. And honestly, I think that pretty much anything we add to it is gonna get lost in this drink. It's pretty good though. I mean, honestly, I'm not even, I really, you guys, I, it sounds like I'm joking. I'm not. As a morning after drink, um, as a hangover remedy. I could definitely see people enjoying this. Uh, it might not be my cup of tea, but it's not too bad. You can see that I keep going back for more, so. There is something really nice. There's a moment of very pleasant, neutral pepper flavor in its profile before the really the heat, the fire comes in at the end, which is like very fresh and vegetal and very enjoyable. And you get that for a moment while it's cold and in your mouth still. 
and then the volume gets turned up on that heat and it just keeps coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. And it's a little bit cumulative. So now my lips are burning probably two or three times the amount that they were before. <laughs> there's like a, there's a seed of a cayenne or something stuck to my tonsil. <laughs> There is no rescue coming. <laughs>